Now previously I had created my voice assistant using an ESP32 S3 with on device wake word. Now I wanted to make my voice assistant smarter using AI. So today we will be looking at how we can integrate chat GPT as well as Gemini model from Google AI and see how this thing makes my voice assistant smarter. So with this, let's get started. So to start off, there are two things that we have to do. First of all, we have to integrate the services that is the Google AI and OpenAI to Home Assistant. And then afterwards, we are going to use the services in our pipelines. So let's do that first. So I'm going to do this for OpenAI first. So let's go to settings. Then I'm going to go to devices and services and I'm going to click on add integration. Here I'm going to search for OpenAI and I'm going to click on this. So now here I need to add an API key for accessing OpenAI. So for this, what you have to do is you have to log into your OpenAI account. So I'm going to do that right now. And once you reach this dashboard of the platform.openai.com, click on the dashboard and go to API keys. Now here you can generate a new API key here. So let me create a new secret key here. So I'm just going to call it as HA API key. Just going to keep it as a default project and I'm going to say create secret key. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to click on done. I'm going to go back to Home Assistant and I'm going to paste this here. So with this, we have set up chat GPT integration in our Home Assistant. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on finish and let's open this conversation agent. I'm going to click on configure here. And here you can see an instructions that have been set such that this behaves like a voice assistant for you inside Home Assistant. Now in this, I'm going to add in these two lines. That is, please do not include any kind of text formatting. Also respond with maximum 20 words. Now here, I just want a response to be really short and it just responds really quickly. Now you don't have to mention this as such, like you can always go with the default prompt that is there and use it, no problem at all. Now there are some of the changes that you have to do in the recommended model settings. So first of all, I'm going to uncheck this and I'm going to click on submit. And by default, it makes use of GPT 4.0. Now GPT 4.0 is a more expensive model. It can go up to five euros per million token. Whereas what we will be using is the chat GPT 3.5 turbo. Now chat GPT 3.5 turbo is pretty good for our voice assistant capabilities. So I'm going to replace this with a GPT turbo 3.5 model here. So this one is cheaper than the GPT 4.0 version. And it's, I think enough for our home assistant controls. Now the cost of this is nearly like 0.5 dollar per million token and it is way cheaper than the 4.0 version. So with this, I'm going to now click on submit. And with this, I'm going to finish. Now here we have set up our conversation agent, which actually makes use of open AI. Now what we are going to do is we are going to go to settings and we are going to set up our first voice assist pipeline. So my first assist pipeline that I have here is actually making use of the on-device wake word detection using ESP32 S3. And if you want to check out that video wherein I've shown you how I've set up my own voice assistant using an ESP32 S3 and it does on-device wake word detection. So there's a video that I have linked here as well as into the description below. You can refer to it and see the entire setup and how I actually created this voice assistant. We'll be making use of the same device here right now. And here I have done quite some many setups here. So first of all, I'm making use of the home assistant a conversation agent here. That's the default one that is available. And for speech to text, I have faster whisper as well as for text to speech. I have Piper here. Now setting up these two add-ons or these two plugins, I have a separate video here, but I'm linking it here up as well as into the description below. You can refer to it and see how you can set this up on the Home Assistant OS itself, or you can set it up on a completely different machine, which has a more powerful resource. And you can also do this using Docker. So all of that information is present into that video. What I'm going to do now is considering you have set up all these speech to text and text to speech plugins. We are going to create our first pipeline. So I'm going to say add assistant and I'm going to just call this as open AI. And in the conversation agent, I'm going to select chat GPT. And here in the text to speech, I'm going to select faster whisper. And for speech to text, I'm going to select Piper and I'm going to select this voice here. So in the wake word, I'm not going to set up anything because I'm using the on device wake word detection. And now I'm going to click on create. So we have our pipeline been created, right? Let me now go ahead and open a voice assistant. So let's go to the devices section 
and in the devices section i have this esp32 and i have this esp32 s3 with wakeboard detection right so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the assist pipeline here so i'm going to change from prefer to now open ai because now we have more than one pipelines right so i'm going to select open ai and now we are going to actually test and see if this thing works so for this what i have here is that i have this overview section and in this i have this matter plug and i have this bedroom speaker now this is a google home mini speaker that i have and if i click on this it turns on if i click on this it turns off it turns off meaning it just turns off the communication now let's consider that we want to turn off all the devices in the bedroom right now this speaker is in my bedroom as well as this matter plug is also in my bedroom so let's see if we can turn this on so i'm going to make use of my voice assistant right now hey jarvis turn on all the devices in the bedroom turns on bedroom speaker and matter plug in the bedroom area okay so now this actually did the stuff that we need from here like it actually turned on this bedroom speaker as well as my matter plug right now now let's try and ask something else like hey jarvis what is the tallest building in the world the tallest building in the world is the burj khalifa in dubai united arab emirates okay so it responded with actually some information about the tallest building in the world so this is how it actually works right now now in my tests i have seen that sometimes it does not respond with the answers it says that hey i am a conversation agent and i am only meant to control devices inside home assistant so i cannot answer this apparently sometimes it works sometimes it does not work it's it's what i figured out now let's try asking it some different question hey jarvis who is the current president of germany current president of germany is frank walter steinmeier okay so it actually responded with the right answer now let's try actually turning off these devices hey jarvis turn off all the devices in the bedroom so it turned off all the devices in the bedroom right now so this is how the integration with open ai works now what we are going to do is we are going to check the integration with google ai so we are going to make use of gemini model and let's do that right now so i'm going to go to settings and i'm going to go to devices and here i'm going to add integration and i'm going to search for google and then here i'm going to select google generative ai now here you are asked to create an api key so let me click on this and now here we'll be creating a api key now to create an api key we have to link it to a google cloud project so right now i have these two projects because i was trying this setup before but if you don't have this google cloud project what you have to do is just go to google cloud open this google cloud link and then open this console section here now in this console section right now it has selected one of these projects for me just select on that and i'm going to click on new project here now in this new project let me give it a new name i'm just going to call it as google ai integration and no need for a location or something just click on create and once you come back you can see this project here okay right now i need to refresh this and then i'm going to click here and you should see the project here in case the project doesn't show up immediately it will take a few seconds to show up so just refresh the page after some time and then select this and click on create api key for existing project so now we have an api key let's actually copy this and let's go back here and i'm going to paste this here so with this we have now integrated google generative ai inside home assistant let's click on finish and now i'm going to go to this integration now. and here i'm going to click on configure now in this i'm going to add these two sentences that is respond with maximum 20 words and do not include any kind of text formatting now here also i'm allowing it to control home assistant devices so setting this assist option it allows this conversation agent to control devices in your home assistant now i'm going to uncheck this and i'm going to click on submit to see what are the various default options that we have so right now we have gemini 1.5 flash model so this is the latest model that is as of now like june 2024 and we are going to make use of this now this is not a free model it is a paid model and all of these are still paid models and i'll tell you how and why these 
models are paid so stick around to see why exactly now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to click on submit here right now so with this we have done the configuration for our conversation agent right now let's actually use this in a pipeline so i'm going to go to settings now i'm going to go to voice assistant and i'm going to click on add assistant and here i'm going to call this as google ai i'm going to select the google generative ai conversation agent and then i'm going to select faster whisper here i'm going to select piper for text to speech and i'm going to select this voice here and i'm going to click on create so with this we have set up our pipeline to use now google ai so now what we are going to do is we are going to see if this thing works well so let me go to the ov section now and we have these devices which are right now in my bedroom so before we give a command to our voice assistant, what we are going to do is we are going to change the default pipeline for our voice assistant. So let me go to my voice assistant here and I'm going to change from OpenAI to Google AI. So now with this, it will start making use of the Google AI pipeline. So now let's go ahead and test this. Hey Jarvis, turn on all the devices in the bedroom. So okay. So if you see, it has responded and it has turned on all the devices. So right now the bedroom speaker and this matter plug. Now let's try asking it a different question. Hey Jarvis, which is the tallest building in the world? Tallest building in the world is the Athaskastan Burj Khalifa, Athaskastan in Dubai, UAE. Okay. So if you see, it's a little bit obscure here. Why I'll tell you. Let's go to the debug pipeline here. So I'm going to go right now to my settings here. And I'm going to go to my voice assistant and let's open the debug pipeline. So here, if you see, it has responded properly, but it's still including these asterisks and it's actually saying out these asterisks also. So this is something that I figured out when the responses from uh, the Google AI comes in and I could not find a way right now to actually get rid of it. I put in the prompt sentences, but it still does not work. So right now, at least this is working fine. Like it responds to the questions that I ask it, like general questions, as well as it controls all the home assistant devices that I have properly. Now let's look at both these integrations from the cost point of view. Now the GPT 3.5 turbo costs around 50 cent per million token for input and $1.5 per million token of output. Now, if you make use of GPT-4.0, which is a default settings for the integration, then it will cost you like around $5 a million token. Now, while I was experimenting around the GPT integration, I saw that the cost of the 4.0 was nearly 10 times more than the cost of the 3.5 turbo for the same number of tokens. Now looking at the Gemini API, it is not free for the European economic region. So it would cost you like around 35 cent per million token of input and around a dollar for a million token of output. Now while I was experimenting around this, it cost me around 5 cent while I was using it for nearly 2 to 3 hours. Now let's look at it in terms of reliability. I felt like the chat GPT was much more reliable compared to the Gemini API because sometimes the Gemini API would actually not turn on all the devices in the room when I asked it to do so. It would only turn on one or two and sometimes it would not turn on all of them. Also, I tried to modify the prompts for the Gemini API. It always sent me the formatted output even though I specified in the prompt that it should not send me the formatted output. So this was something that I faced. Currently, I'm exploring around how you can run one of these AI models completely locally such that we can have complete local control. As of now, I haven't found something that is reliable, but once I do, I will make a video about it. Now I keep on making videos around how you can make things smart at home. So if you want to support this channel, there are links into the description below wherein you can buy me a coffee or you can support me via Patreon. Now you can also join the channel as a channel member. And if you want, you can also give me one of those super thanks. Now, if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button as well as hit that subscribe button for more such videos to come. Till then, take care and I will see you in my next one.